black male leader. I was struck by Representative Kenyatta's question to the President and by the President's reply. Representative Kenyatta asked him if he still feels hopeful. And I'm glad he asked that because it's something I think about a lot. I've been through a few elections in my life. Maybe just a few more than Representative Kenyatta. I've lived through the civil rights movement. I've seen forward progress from landmark Supreme Court cases, securing fundamental rights to incredible uprisings, demanding and winning real and lasting change. But so too have I seen the ebb and flow of progress and the always present scourge of deep systemic racism, hatred and greed that hold so many people back from a fair shot. But never in my life have I seen the likes of what has unfolded under the so-called leadership of the racist, xenophobic, misogynistic, vindictive, inhumane bigot who currently occupies 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue. <laughs> or at least occupies it when he's not at his swanky Florida country club, hobnobbing with the rich who are only out to earn a buck and to earn it on the backs of the most vulnerable among us. We're just a few days away from the most critical election in our lifetimes, and everything is on the line. In Philadelphia, this union has built a political program that is rooted in the fundamental knowledge that deep systemic problems take bold action. It's why when the former governor of this state tried to break us, tried to break public education in Philadelphia and end our right to organize, we fought. The political shift in Philadelphia started when this union alongside many you see in the crowd and many who are standing beside me here joined forces and fought like hell to not only make sure that the previous governor was the first one-term governor in recent Pennsylvania history, but also to build a movement for change. A movement that ended the state takeover of Philadelphia schools. A, a movement that demanded and won community schools. A movement that built on unrelenting hope and fortitude in the face of adversity. So when I think of Representative Kenyatta's question to President Obama, and when I think about how our union has collectively fought back and fought forward, I can't help but be hopeful. Let's be very clear. These last four years have been devastating in so many ways and deadly for so many. Immigrant children and families locked in cages, the celebration of fascism and white supremacy, the refusal to follow science in the wake of the COVID crisis. I think often of Fannie Lou Hamer's quote, I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired. Yeah. And it's true, we all should be. And that means we have to fight even harder for what we know this country can be. Joe Biden is the leader that this nation needs right now. He is unwavering in his commitment to all of us and hearing his vision and promises, you can't help but feel hopeful. He is a man of character, of dignity, of empathy. Like so many of us, He's known great joy and great loss. He's known hope and fear, and he's never wavered on his commitment to fighting for all of us. He will, as he says, build back better. So in the coming days, we have our work cut out for us, and in the coming years, the work will continue. 
And that work is as important in City Hall, in the State House, and in the State Senate as it is in the White House. This union has worked tirelessly over the last several years to win back the State House and the Senate. And we've been making huge gains, and we're not stopping now. We're on the brink of big change. And that, and for that, I dare to say, I am hopeful. It is my pleasure to introduce to you the founding member of For Our Future. He puts his money where his mouth is. There's someone that I think you all know. We are so pleased to have with us this morning Tom Steyer. Hey, you guys. So I know that everybody says this is the most important election of our life. And that's actually true because there's more at stake in this election than there's ever been before. And there's a bigger difference between the candidates than there's ever been before, too. And the way we're going to know it's the most ele important election of our lifetime is there are going to be more people voting in America in 2020 than have ever voted before, ever. And if you look at today, if you look at this line, if you look at yourselves, take a look. People are aware at, of what's at stake, and everybody knows they have to show up. And they're absolutely right. They absolutely have to show up. That's where we are, and I want to thank you for doing this. It's incredibly important. Let's just talk about one issue. There's so many things we could talk about, but let's talk about working people for one second. I have been running political campaigns on the ballot for over a decade. My first partner was organized labor. My best partner has been organized labor. My last partner will be organized labor. So when I see AFT, when I see Randy Weingarten show up, that is a sign not just that union members are showing up. That means that the values of working people are showing up, including people who aren't organized, but whom unions fight for every single day. So when I look at this election, all of the union leaders are behind Joe Biden and Kamala Harris for good reason. Because they actually care about working people and this country has to change. And I'm actually incredibly optimistic. I look at you, I look at these people who are here at nine o'clock on a Saturday morning to vote, to stand in line to do their civic duty because they know how important it is. So this is the moment. This is the moment, 10 days, to find out what the future of the United States will look like, to change the world here in Pennsylvania. Here in Pennsylvania, 44,000 votes is what Pennsylvania went for Trump for in 2016. That can never happen again. This is gonna be a state that people are gonna say when Pennsylvania goes for Joe Biden and Kamala Harris, then Joe Biden and Kamala Harris win and we change the world. So thank you, thank you, thank you for showing up. Thank you, Randy. Thank you, AFT. Thank you, Philadelphia, because I can tell you, someone from California, we need you so badly. What you're doing is so important. So please, go get them and let's bury these people. Thank you, Tom. And now I'd like to introduce Council Member Helen Kaplan. <laughs> Helen has been a partner of the PFT for decades. Council Member Gim was with us before she ever wanted our political support. And she's never wavered in her commitment to justice. She embodies the hope I see in the future of politics. From fighting school closures to organizing around the dissolution of the SRC. Helen never, ever stops pushing forward. Giving up is never an option with her, and we're all better because of her fortitude. 
her intelligence, and her leadership. Council Member Gim. Thank you, Jerry. Hey! This is for every worker who's lost a job and needs a president to do theirs. This is for every healthcare worker and teacher who's, who has shown up every darn day on the job. This is for every grieving American who may have lost somebody or sees an empty chair at the table. And this is for every student, parent, and young person wondering about their future and their rights. November 3rd is for us. It is for us. I want to thank Tom Steyer, a presidential candidate, who took to the stage and talked about what it meant to stand up for labor and working people. I am incredibly grateful to our AFT and PFT team who is here with us right now. Teachers have built this nation. Teachers have reformed politics in the city of Philadelphia. I know because I came out of that. And I am so incredibly grateful. But I'm gonna start here and remind us that Philadelphia is psyched. We are pumped, look at this line. It's been going on for weeks. We're not waiting until November 3rd. We're talking about our children, our healthcare, our jobs, and the decency of this nation. And so um, I have my ballot right here with me. As soon as I'm done here, I'm going to join this line and begin uh, with my own vote and remind ourselves that this country has always stood for decency, for democracy, for rule of law, and for the decency and human rights freedoms that we have all uplifted. So I came out of here as a parent organizer, and that is why I am so proud to introduce the next speaker, Evelyn De Jesus, AFT's Vice President. When we talk about education transforming, I want us to remember Evelyn started out as a parent organizer. She has held every single job. She understands the struggles of working parents right now. She knows what it's like to struggle to keep a roof over your head, the lights on, food on the table, and make sure your child does their homework and is successful in school. And then she goes out and fights for every single teacher, labor worker who is fighting for a union right now or wants to be in one. So I'm proud and honored to say that teachers are gonna rise up. Rise up. We're gonna win Philadelphia. We're winning Pennsylvania, and we're gonna win this country. Evelyn. Thank you, thank you, my sister. So we care, we fight, we show up, and we vote. And this is what democracy looks like. I'm ready, and when I saw Tom this morning, I got off the bus, I said, Tom, I'm excited. Yes, we have every, we have pandemic, we have economic, we have uh, environment, we have everything. But let's not fool ourselves. Our vote is our protest. And I have these notes, but I don't wanna talk about these notes. Because as I got off the boat, I got off the bus, I didn't get emotional. I looked at this line and I saw the elderly here. And you know what? My mom is not here to vote. I lost my mom. And I, you know, sometimes when you're in the mix of all this, you forget. But I got teary eyed because when I was coming up and Mike was in the front of the bus, I saw people with wheelchairs. And I said, oh my God, I lost my mom, I had COVID. And she had to die alone because everyone in my family had COVID and we couldn't go to see her. We couldn't bury her for nine weeks. Then I had a stroke. But it was important that I'm here today because I'm here for my mom. I'm here for all the ones that we have lost. I'm here for the ones that can't vote, that wanted to vote. Because for my mom, the Latino community, voting was an honor and a privilege. It was like religion. You came out of church, you knew what you had to do, and you went to the polls. And I remember in the last election, I wheeled her 
to vote. And I can't do that today. I can't, but I, I know she's looking at me today and saying, good and faithful servant, job well done. So for my mom, for all the moms, for all the dads, for all the uncles, for everyone that has gotten sick and have been neglected by this president that doesn't hold himself accountable for anything, I stand here before you today. Mucha gracia. Thank you. Thank you, Evelyn. I'm thrilled to have you in my hometown today, and thank you for your dedication and your passion. Next, I'd like to introduce one of our freshman members of city council. A Philadelphia public school graduate and the son of a longtime PFT member. Council member Isaiah Thomas has started his political career full steam ahead. He's committed to making the big changes I spoke about earlier and is unapologetic in his advocacy. Council member Thomas. So first, I just want to say thank you uh, to Mr. Jordan for the introduction, and uh, more importantly, thank you to all the teachers that are out here today. Um, as it was said, yes, absolutely, please. So as it was said, um, I am a graduate of public schools. My father is a, a longtime PFT uh, member, now a retired teacher, and the irony is, is my father actually turned uh, 71 yesterday. So uh, we was up partying until about 9.30 last night. And <laughs> Uh, he couldn't be up this morning, otherwise he'd be here. Um, but uh, uh, more important than that, um, Mr. Jordan always also talked about how I try to be honest in my advocacy and the work that I've done. And I'm going to be honest with you. You know, I'm one of many parents. We talk all the time about this. You know, we hate virtual school. Virtual school is the worst. It's terrible. But one of the things that virtual school has done, like so many other uh, different things that this pandemic has shown, is this giving us a greater appreciation for teachers, right? Like we have a whole new love for teachers, what you do. We have a whole new level of appreciation for you. And fortunately and unfortunately, some of us have gotten to know our children in ways that we thought we never would. So I'm hoping that when we return back to school and we have to have them tough conversations with parents, you know, they no longer surprise who their children are. And that's you know, an issue that you've been going through for years. And, um, you know, I just, I, I, I appreciate you so much. Um, like, like Mr. Jordan said, I was one of the people who had the opportunity to have a conversation with President Obama, along with a few of my colleagues that's here today. And, and he said a lot of things that stuck out. We were about 10 minutes away from here, which I think was awesome because it speaks to the, the optics of it, right? Like we really need people to come out and vote. And, and, and we're going to vote, we know that. Right, but our job is to make sure that this message penetrates the people who are on the fence, right? And so for me, one of the things that President Obama said that stuck out was uh, when talking about what has changed, right? He said, really think about it. For us to vote, it's much easier than what it was for our ancestors. We're here at an early voting center today. I know myself and my colleagues, this was something we fought for in the spring. We didn't think it would be here and now we have 17 sites across the city of Philadelphia where people can go and vote early. But outside of that, you know, he talked about the struggles that our parents went through, the laws that were passed, and the things that put them in a position to be able to allow us to advocate for the things that we want to advocate for. And again, I said it was my dad's birthday yesterday, and my dad has talked about a good friend of his who knows what it means to go through that struggle. I vividly remember my dad telling me a story about how him and Mr. Art Steinberg worked together at Edison High School, and they were teachers together in the middle of the race riots during the 60s. And so when you talk about the difficulty of voting, when you talk about how tough it is to be a teacher and deal with the issues that we're dealing with today, the folks who paved the way for us to be here today, they know what real struggle is. We're struggling, but they know what real struggle is. 
And Mr. Art is a great example of that. And Mr. Art, I appreciate you. I appreciate your leadership as it relates to the AFT. And I'm proud to introduce the leader of the AFT, Mr. Art Steinberg. Thank you, council member. And I must add that... Thank you, council member. And I'd like to add that I walked many a picket line with your father back in, in the early 80s. And he was out every single day and had my back because I had to look out and get water. Got it. Sorry about that, folks. Technological challenges. Uh, good morning, everybody. It's nice to see those big Okay. How's that? Is that better? <laughs> there you go. Listen, everyone, make no mistake about it. Our democracy is at stake here. And if you answer one fundamental question, I think that crystallizes it. Do we want to be the kind of country that thinks it's okay to separate parents from children, put people in cages, which was normalized by this president, or do we want to live by, the, by Emma Lazarus's motto, which is at the base of the Statue of Liberty, bring me your tired, your poor, your huddled masses who yearn for freedom. I know that's the kind of country I want my grandchildren to live in, and we're going to make that happen. I want, to, I want to thank Randy for leading this long, arduous bus tour. She's already made stops. In, how's that? Just in the last two days, she's been in Pittsburgh, Allentown, Scranton, and later today in Plymouth meeting. As we all know, Pennsylvania is so important that not only do we have AFT President Weingarten here and Executive Vice President DeJesus, but we also have Vice President Biden, Dr. Biden, and Bon Jovi doing events nearby today. As everyone knows, the path of the White House goes through Pennsylvania, and Pennsylvania is gonna put Joe Biden over the top. And Philadelphia is gonna put Pennsylvania over the top. Just to give you an idea of the work our union has done that Jerry spoke about, already 21% of our membership has mailed in their ballots already, and 26% across the state. If we keep numbers like that going, then there's no doubt in my mind that not only will Joe Biden become the president, but we will take control of the Senate, and just as importantly, control of the legislature in Pennsylvania so that we can fight and stop the DeVos privatization agenda and for once go on offense and propose a pro-education program. All across the Commonwealth, in cities like Philadelphia, Scranton, Pittsburgh, Allentown, the schools are full of asbestos, lead, and mold. And it is criminal that our teachers and our kids have to learn in these environments. With the money that was, should have been given out by the HEROES Act already, which is sitting and being held hostage by those Republicans in Harrisburg that I'm talking about, right. they're holding a billion dollars hostage right. that could already go into ailing families, small businesses, and also to allow Steve Newman's campus here at Temple University to open safely. It is imperative that we win the White House, the Senate, and the legislature in Pennsylvania so we have two years with our, with our Democratic governor to advance this agenda. And I leave you with these words. We will, in fact, do that. And come November 3rd, Joe Biden is going to be president, and we're going to control the legislature in Pennsylvania. Thank you. I, now, I would also like to um, introduce a very good friend of the PFTs and working people all across the city of Philadelphia, uh, Council Member Derek Green, who I, I mentioned the asbestos and lead and mold as a founding member of our Fund Our Facilities Coalition, which is the best known advocacy group for fixing the crumbling infrastructure in the state of Pennsylvania. He was there from the beginning and is a constant supporter of ours, and it's with a great deal of pleasure that I introduce the council member, wherever he is. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Art, thank you for that introduction. I want to thank Tom Steyer for being here. I want to thank Jerry Jordan, Hillary, all the members of the Philadelphia Federation teachers. I want to thank Randy for being here again. It seems like you're here almost every other week. Uh, but thank you for your leadership. Can we give her a hand, please? 
I want to thank all my colleagues at the state and local level, elected officials, all the speakers that are here today. This is so very important. You know, we're here to generate activity and energy to make sure that everyone comes out to vote in just a few days. But I think the importance of why today and the work we're doing was really crystallized by Evelyn by what you said. And when, when you spoke about your mother, it made me think about over 225,000 people in this nation have lost their life due to this virus. And when you think about that and all the unfortunate situations that we've had, people that cannot touch their loved one, as Joe Biden said at the di dining room table, don't have the opportunity to hug someone as they are transitioning. And we think about that type of impact that it's had on this nation. And then you see a line like we have this morning here at the Lear Corps Center. And we think about what Councilmember Thomas talked about when he spoke with President Obama, about what we as a nation, as a people, have done to have the right to vote. And how dare this president and all those around this country try to take away that right from us. And it just angers me so much because I think about my grandfather, a man who I never got a chance to meet, who only wore a suit two times, when he went to church and when he went to vote. And that is what we have done in this country throughout all these many years and decades. And so for all of you teachers, the fact you are here advocating why this election is so important, when you have a president and administration with a Betsy DeVos trying to devalue what you do every single day, it, it, it touches me. Because we entrust teachers with our most valued asset, our children. Every single person here has been touched by a teacher. Someone that instilled in them the opportunity to do great things, to be a teacher, to, do, to get elected to office to become a labor leader. Teachers have done this in this country. And so we need to make sure we support you and support all the work that you do. That's why this election on November 3rd is so important. That's why we need to make sure we contact every single person. We all know all of us will vote. But it's our neighbors, our young people, our relatives who think, well, why should I vote? Why should I vote? Does it really make a difference? Four years ago, we saw what happened when we don't do the right thing. So we gotta continue to do, use every bit of energy that we have to be here at events like this. We go back to our homes and our friends and our relatives, our neighbors, and we make sure they get out to vote because that is what is so important. It's important for that little boy and girl that's gonna be in your classrooms in the future. It's gonna be important for all the people that have lost their lives and it's so important for the people that have dedicated their lives to doing what we need to do and using their franchise to vote like my grandfather. So thank you for being here. Thank you for the work we're gonna do. Don't get tired. We only got a few more days left and we're gonna change the direction of this country. Thank you. Thank you, council member, for those inspiring words. How's that? The next person that I'd like to introduce is a tireless advocate for social justice and is in the middle of an epic battle with, the, with this university right here who is insisting on reopening virtually when Philadelphia had a record number of 411 cases yesterday. And the state had the most that it's ever had. And he's engaged with them daily on, the, on behalf of his members and the, and the students that go here trying to keep them safe. So without any further uh, ado, Steve Newman, the president of Temple University. Thank you, everybody. How are you this morning? You all right? You ready to go? I see this line around here. I see people who are willing to come out and vote to change this nation, which is what we need. And I want to thank President Weingarten, Evelyn, Vice President DeJesus. You know, anything we do here at TAUP, at the Temple Association University Professionals, we represent around 2,500 faculty, librarians, academic professionals, part-time and full-time, fighting to make sure that our students have the conditions they need to learn. And that's why we're here. And nothing we do is possible without the people I see around me. The labor leaders, the elected officials, people like Representative Kenyatta, people like Helen Gim,
who have been with us in this fight. None of that happens without them, and none of it happens without the people here. I just want to speak briefly because we have so many eloquent speakers. You don't need me to tell you what the stakes are in this election. Everything is at stake. Everything we fought for. Everything the people whose shoulders we stand on have fought for, have bled for, have even died for. The civil rights movement. The environmental movement, the labor movement, it's all on the line right now. You know this. You don't need me to tell you. We need to be, we are fighting for our right to health care, our right to love as we must, to be who we are without fear of racist violence, to bequeath to the coming generations a free and just nation and an inhabitable planet. That's what's at stake. And I want to say what's happening here is the best of Temple University. Temple University has opened up the Leah Chorus Center so that the, everybody in the city of brotherly love and sisterly affection can exercise their sacred right to vote. And it was also the best of Temple when the university opened up this space as a hospital to treat those who are still being, who are stalked by the virus, which is still stalking us to this day. That's the best of Temple. And these are the sort of wise and just and democratic actions that make Philadelphia's public university worthy of the name. And we need to see more of that. For as we stand here today, I regret to report that Temple's board and administration are not always in touch with their better angels. Instead of taking their cues from the democracy modeled by this voting site, they continue to make decisions without properly including all of the members of the community, as with the current presidential search committee, which falls unacceptably short of the necessary diversity. Only 22% women? Really? Only one-third people of color? Nobody from the North Philadelphia community on the presidential search committee? Come on now. You can do better than that, and you have to. And also in the plans they've made for COVID, both in the fall where they didn't listen to us, and we said, guys, you're risking an outbreak in a poor community. Did they listen to us? I'm sorry to say they didn't. Are they listening to us now? Not yet, but we're going to keep raising our voices to make sure. And that the people we work for, for example, the over 1,000 adjuncts we represent, who work part-time teaching students for low wages and no job security and few benefits, we're going to keep fighting for them. We understand the board and the administration have difficult choices to make. Bring us in. It'll be easier. You'll make wiser choices. You'll have the benefit of the experience of the people in this neighborhood who know what they're talking about, who know things you don't, just as the teachers at this place know things you don't. Bring us in, and we can all make decisions together so the temple will flourish. There are lots of reasons. There are lots of reasons to be voting in this election. I just want to speak very briefly from the heart, if you don't mind. I'm teaching online like so many of my brothers and sisters. I see 39 little boxes in the course I'm teaching on the 18th century novel. And we're not just in the 18th century now. I'm teaching about Black Lives Matter. I'm teaching about slavery and insurrection. I'm teaching about the yellow fever in 1793 and how African Americans were treated then and how African Americans, who especially are frontline workers, are being treated now. And when you think about your relatives and you don't know whether or not they're going to vote and your friends whether or not you're going to vote, please spare a thought for our students. They're in pain right now. They're scared the way young people should not be scared. They don't know if they're going to have jobs. They don't know if they're going to have the money they need to go to school and better their lives. They are seeing to their sisters and brothers because their parents are out working on the front lines. And our schools are closed because we don't have enough leaders with the kind of wisdom who are up with me on this stage right now to fund schools the way they need to be funded. We need to think about them like we need to think about all of our young people right now because they're looking to us and they're also leading the way. They're not waiting for us. So we're either gonna join arms with them and move us forward or we're gonna be left behind in a situation where this planet's not inhabitable and the society we need's not gonna be here. That's what we need to do together. And I gotta be honest, in the last four years, there have been times when I've been afraid and I've been on the lip of despair. But I look around me, and I see who's fighting alongside me. And I know my tongue that was going to cleave to the roof of my mouth. That fear drops away, and I know I can speak, and I must speak. 
all together because I know who's fighting with me. I know who's alongside me. I know their wisdom. I know their strength. And together we're going to vote and we're going to bring in Joe Biden and Kamala Harris into the White House and we're going to change the Senate and we're going to flip the Pennsylvania legislature and we're going to see justice in this nation because without that, the lives of purpose and joy that we know we all deserve will not be possible. And I'm not going to live in a world where that's not possible. And I know you all aren't either. So thank you for coming out today. Thank you to all these leaders with us. That's what we have to do together. God bless. Thank you, Steve. Next up, we have another freshman member of city council and a remarkable person and elected official. Catherine Gilmore Richardson is an elected official who makes this city a better place. Catherine was one of the members of city council who fought to make sure that this contract that we just got this week was settled. She's a problem solver, a doer, and a critical mind. As a Philadelphia Public School graduate and a Philadelphia Public School parent, she is deeply committed She's deeply committed to fighting for an equitable system of public education that all of our children deserve. Council member. Thank you. Good morning, PFT. Good morning, AFT. This is our time and this is our moment. We have 10 days to get the job done. First, I want to say thank you to Jerry, to Hillary, Randy, all of your leadership and your membership who are here. We truly appreciate you. As a graduate of Gompers Elementary School, Masterman Middle School, and the Philadelphia High School for Girls, a former teacher at Overbrook High School, and now a mother of children in the public school system, I have a kindergartner at Gompers and a ninth grader right around the corner at ENS. I thank you for your service. Thank you. You all are going above and beyond in this moment. And I see it each and every day when I log my daughter on for school. Her teacher has a five-year-old who's also in kindergarten and has a one-year-old, and she's paying someone to come into her home to take care of her children so that she can teach my daughter. So when the moment came up to support you all in the recent contract negotiations, I was angry. I was angry when I read in the paper that you all had to talk about potentially calling a strike because you couldn't get the job done. And I called Dr. Height, and I called Dr. Height, and I called Dr. Height, and said, so we have to support our teachers. Because this is a moment that did not have to be. We are dealing with a man at 1600 Black Lives Matter Plaza in DC, Council Member Green, who does not believe in the data who did not and does not believe in the science back in January when we could have had this crisis under control by now. And I heard you talk about your mother. And I'm so sorry for your loss. And I have a friend who lost her mother and her father within six weeks of each other, and this didn't have to be. This is a moment that we're dealing with four different crises at once. We're dealing with COVID-19. We're dealing with the economic crisis. We're dealing with climate change. And we're dealing with the most deadly pandemic we've ever known, racism. Yeah. And we are going to need people in the White House and in the State House, Senator, and in Philadelphia City Council who understand where we are. 
We need to elect Joe Biden and Kamala Harris. We are literally in the fight for the future of this country. And I'll be damned if I leave this country the way it is to my children who are five years old, three years old, and 15 years old. This is our time. Thank you, PFT. Thank you, AFT. Thank you, council member. So you may be sensing a theme here. Good things happen in Philadelphia. And these elected officials embody the hope that we should all have moving forward. Now I'd like to ask another one of our close allies, Representative Elizabeth Seidler, to speak. <laughs> Representative Seidler is a coalition builder, a thoughtful leader, and a deeply devoted advocate for justice. South Philadelphia and the city at large is better because you're in the state house Representative Fiedler. Thank you, Jerry. Thank you for your kind words. Thank you, Jerry. Thank you, Hillary. Thank you, Randy. Thank you, everyone who's here today. I am the proud daughter of two union public school teachers. And as you may have seen, I'm also the proud parent of I'm also the proud parent of a kindergartner and a three-year-old who will one day attend our public schools. We know what's on the ballot this year, right? Biden-Harris at the top of the ticket, as you heard, we've got to get them across the finish line. But there's so many other races on the ballot as well that we are fighting for. Flipping the state house, can we do it? Yes, we can. Flipping the state senate, we can do that too. So many races on the ballot and so many issues, right? It's not just names on the ballot. Public education is on the ballot. Union rights on the ballot. Every working and poor person in this country being treated with dignity and respect on the ballot. And you know an issue that is near and dear to my heart, getting the lead and asbestos out of every single school is on the ballot. We've got 10 days left. How do we have 10 days left? I'm not sure. Time is moving quickly and slowly at the same time. We are here because we are so excited to have AFT with us here to get out the vote. We are excited about the people in line, and yet we know we have a lot of work to do, right? I see these polls that show one person ahead, and I got to tell you, I'm not going to believe it until it's all done. Until it's all done, and as you heard, it is overwhelming. It is a landslide. And so I would encourage everyone here today, as Councilmember Gim said, if you've got one of these mail-in ballots, and it's on your kitchen table, and you've been meaning to get it in, get it in today. And then, and then, right? Because it does not stop at voting. And then, think in your head about the two or the three or the five people you know who might not be voting. Or you know they're not voting. They're on the fence. They're wondering, does their vote matter? They're confused about the process this year. Think about those people. Is it going to be a hard conversation? Maybe. Maybe you don't really talk about politics in your family or with your neighbors. Think about what's at stake, right? Public education, union rights, getting the lead and asbestos out forever. And then pick up the phone, call them, or if you're kind of not into calling, text them at least and follow up with a phone call. And make sure that you are not just voting, but getting other folks out to vote as well. Thank you so much for being here. We've got 10 days, and uh, thank you to everyone for having me. Thank you, Representative Fiedler. And newly elected or veteran elected leaders alike are fighting shoulder to shoulder in this fight for a better tomorrow. One of our longtime allies, Senator Vincent Hughes, is no stranger to fighting for what's right. He's one of the strongest leaders in the Commonwealth and has led the charge on so many critical issues, including, of course, 
the establishment of our Fund Our Facilities Coalition. And he just happens to be my state senator, Senator Vincent He. All right, all right, all right. All right, all right. So, 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 first let's thank Randy Weingarten for bringing her billionaire friends to Philadelphia. We thank you, Randy. Please spend lots of money here while you're here, all right? What's up, family? What's up, family? Oh, I hate these masks. I hate these damn masks. God, oh, go to hell and give I can't stand these masks. But we're going to make this work. Repeat after me. Biden. Biden. Oh, come on, teachers. Biden. Biden. Harris. Harris. Come on, Biden. Biden. Harris. Harris. Come on, Biden. Biden. Come on, Harris. Harris. All right, all right. Let's give Biden Harris a round of applause. All right, technology, what you gonna do with it? All right, we have every reason to vote against, and I want you to hear me when I say this, and I want you to hear, get it on the TV. We have every reason to vote against the white supremacists in chief in the White House. I said it. I say it again, we have every reason to vote against the white supremacist in chief who resides in the White House at 1600 Black Lives Matter Plaza. Thank you, council member. Every reason to vote against him. It was said earlier, 220,000 people have died because of this pandemic. That's about 30,000 people every month. Think about that. 30,000 people every month who should be alive right now. They should be alive right now. Mothers, fathers, uncles, grandmoms, sons, daughters, little children, Senior citizens, I lost an uncle, 91-year-old uncle, the worst thing in the world, and Jerry, you know my mother, who was a 33-year member of the PFT, Mrs. Hughes at the Martha Washington School. Some of y'all may know where that is. All right, all right, all right, there you go. All my Marthy friends, who never, Randy, never missed a day of work in the 33 years that she worked there. Never missed a day of work. All right, I always gonna talk about my mother. The worst thing that I ever heard, had to deal with was hearing her call me and say I could not go to the hospital to see my brother who died because he had COVID. She couldn't go to the hospital to see him die. And he was a great man, he was a public man, he had lo lots of friends and what have you, but. His homegoing service was attended at the funeral home by five people. He didn't deserve that. My wife's uncle, 91 years old also, when he died, five people at his homegoing service. They didn't deserve that. This president, this white supremacist in chief who resides in the White House, knew that this pandemic was coming knew he was coming. The problem is, he didn't do too well in science class in school. That's why he doesn't believe in science, Randy. He didn't do too well. And also because of his racist tendency, he didn't believe Barack Obama when Barack Obama told him, that's gonna be your biggest problem. You remember that, Malcolm? And then when the playbook was given to him, I guess he couldn't read it or he didn't care to read it. 
He didn't want to read it. But the result of that, and then on top of that, eliminating the entire pandemic office in the White House, on top of all of that, the result is 220,000 people dead. Economy shut down. Businesses probably never coming back. Schools, children missing their teachers, missing the opportunity to get the education they deserve to have. And he still ignores them. He still ignores us. He lets the billions of dollars sit in the bill in Washington, D.C. that could be fixing up our schools right now. That money is sitting there, passed by the House, waiting to be implemented and passed by the Senate, waiting for implementation, but he lets it sit there. We have every reason to vote against him. The list is too long and we don't got that much time because the bus got to go somewhere else. But we got every reason to vote for Joe Biden and Kamala Harris. Every reason, a massive investment in public education that puts teachers first and students first and families first and gives them the 21st century funding, you hear me, the 21st century funding that they need to have to provide the 21st century education that our children need to have. Fixing up all of the schools and making them world class and getting rid of the asbestos and the lead and everything like that. Protecting teachers' rights and union rights. And Council Member Gim said this earlier, that stuff is on the line if we don't get but Joe Biden is for that, and Kamala Harris is for that. And we got every reason to get this thing done. It is on the line. Everything is on the line. Everything that the teachers that you teach about in history class and social science and social studies over the years, all that created to this country and what it is right now, all of that is about to be lost. All of that is about to be lost unless we do what we got to do. So let's be like Congressman John Lewis, who at his funeral, at his funeral, while we were all mourning his funeral, Malcolm, you remember this, there was an editorial in the New York Times. Uh, it's an incredible testimony to who he was as a person. To say, on while you're celebrating, my life at my funeral, I'm reminding you to get into good trouble. I'm reminding you to get into good trouble. Say it with me. Let's get into some good trouble. Let's say it again. Good trouble. Let's say it again. Good trouble. Let's say it again. Good trouble. All right. Cherie Street, what are we going to do? And we're going to vote, right? Are we going to vote? 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 Let's say it. Let's say it so the white supremacists in chief can hear us clearly. We are going to vote. 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 Thank you, my senator. Thank you so much. And now I'd like to ask another one of our great senators to speak. Senator Cherie Street is a passionate leader, and he's been an integral part of our facilities coalition. When a very serious facilities issue arose at a school in his district, T.M. Pierce, he was with us every single step of the way. He is a great senator. Senator Street. All right. Now, I had to follow Vincent Hughes, and that's like in church where you got to follow the pastor. So when the pastor's already given the sermon, only the next person that comes to the microphone, and some of y'all have attended a black church, you know, the next person that comes to the mic is the person who's got to collect the offering. 
Now, Vincent Hughes laid out the message, and the message was that Donald Trump has failed us. The message was that Joe Biden and Kamala Harris will deliver for our schools. They will deliver for our labor unions. They will deliver for our nurses. They will deliver for our healthcare workers. Now, the offering that we got to collect, the offering is we got to offer up our votes. We got to offer up our time. We got to offer up our energy. We can see, when, in order for us to get where we need to go, there's going to be a price that has to be paid like there is in anything else. And the price that has to be paid is a price of us getting out and organizing. Now, we don't have to pay the kind of price that people had to pay when they were trying to vote, when people were beating them up, what John Lewis had to pay when he was crossing the bridge and people were literally beating him with bats. But there's a guy sitting in the White House that wants to bring those days back. He wants to suppress our vote. That's why he took us to court. Not once, not twice, not three times, not five times. I'm losing count of how many times. But every time he takes us to court, we stand up and we beat him in court. So we have the right to vote. He tried, he didn't want an early voting center to be here. He went to court to say, we shouldn't have it. Now I'm proud that I went to court with the Pennsylvania Democratic Party and a whole lot of legislators standing here to fight against them. And we have a center. We've got nine of them. Then there was now a 17 of them. We've got centers across the Commonwealth. But those centers don't mean anything if people don't come out and vote. Now we cannot underestimate him because we did that once before and we're paying the price for it. We paid the price with hundreds of thousands of deaths and millions of people infected with the worst economy that we have seen in our lifetimes. So now I told you the, ser the sermon was already preached. What we need you to do is each of you, you need to continue to get in these lines. You need to continue to line up the vote. You need to continue to encourage your, your family members. You need to continue to encourage your friends. You need to talk to people in your churches, your synagogues, your mosques. You need to talk to people at work, in the supermarket. Everywhere you go, you need to encourage people to vote. For the next 10 days, we will collect the offering, and we will offer it up, and then we will, we will vote him out. Thank you, Senator Street. And now I'd like to introduce State Representative Malcolm Kenyatta. We, we've been honored to support Malcolm since his first foray into politics. And I've been delighted to watch him as he's developed into a, a national profile for his passion, advocacy, and legislative leadership. And he keeps going viral, but for all the right reasons. So Malcolm, thank you for asking President Obama about hope. You, along with every one of the leaders we've heard from today, give me great hope for tomorrow. Representative Kenyatta. Thank you so much, Jerry. So first, I want to thank all my colleagues at the, the state, city, and Congressman Evans was just here at the federal level. Because one of the things you learn in the legislature very, very quickly, is you can't get nothing done by yourself. Nothing done by yourself. So much of politics is a math problem. You need 102 votes in the House, you need 26 votes in the Senate, and you need a governor that's ready to sign that bill. And so I want to thank my colleagues for all that they do day in and day out, fighting for working people, fighting for our teachers, fighting for our families. And so I want to start there. So since the, um, since the beginning of this pandemic, I have a very depressing ritual that particularly folks in the state know. Every morning, the Department of Health sends us an email letting us know how many people we've lost from COVID-19. Every morning, we get that email. Two days ago when I looked at it, we had 8,578 Pennsylvanians who've lost their lives from this out of control pandemic. 8,578 people who are gonna be missing at Thanksgiving, who are gonna be missing at Christmas, who are gonna be missing at Hanukkah and Kwanzaa. Folks who are missing right now 
in their bed, missing across the dinner room table, folks who are looking for that person who loved them best and who had to watch them be buried over Zoom. These ain't just numbers. These are people. These are families. These are uncles and daughters and brothers and sisters who are lost. And this reminds us of the fact that government matters, that good government matters, that competent government matters, that thoughtful government matters, that science-based government matters. It matters to your life. And so we know what's been going wrong for the last four years. We know what's been going wrong. My colleagues all talked about what's been going wrong. But I wanted to spend this last minute before I introduce Randy here of asking you to think about next January. And imagine having a president and a Congress and a state house where we actually do something about climate change. Imagine that. Imagine that. Where we pass legislation, where we start investing in good, clean energy jobs, good, clean energy union jobs that pay people a living wage. Imagine that. Imagine next January us putting a bill on the floor of the Pennsylvania State House that says we're actually gonna do something about the lead and the asbestos and the mold that's gone on for too long. Imagine that. Imagine having a bill come up in the state senate that says we're actually gonna do something about gun safety so we don't have to keep burying black and brown boys. Imagine that. Imagine us being able to go into the contract negotiations like you were doing and not having to fight because there's somebody across the table that values the work that teachers do. Imagine that. Imagine in D.C. having an ed education secretary that is a teacher, that cares about teachers. Imagine that. This has been hard. This has been so hard. And now we are so close. We are so close. Not just to electing two people, Joe Biden, Kamala Harris, they're important. Senators and all the state reps who are running, that's important. But imagine what that vote is gonna mean for your family. Imagine what that vote's gonna mean for your kids. Imagine what that vote's gonna mean for your community. Imagine what that vote's gonna mean for your school. Imagine what that vote's gonna mean for your faith community. Imagine what that vote's gonna mean for the nonprofits that are doing the work right where you live. This vote is not about a candidate. This vote is about you. It's about our future. It's about who we wanna be. It's about who we're gonna be. We're gonna do this work. We're gonna win this fight because we have to win. Because we must win. Because we're not going to lose. We're going to go forward, 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 forward. And a part of the reason I know we're going to do it is because when working people, this is the special sauce, when working people stand up and recognize their power, when working people decide enough is enough, and we're not going to take subpar contracts. We're not going to pension squeeze around our pensions that you broke your backs trying to get. When you all And what I know, what I know is that we have a labor leader in Randy Weingarten who understands the power of organized labor. Who understands what happens when we fight, when we show up, when we fight. And so without further ado, I want to introduce somebody I deeply respect, I deeply admire, and who gets things done, AFT President Randy Weingarten. So this is what I do. I'm the last speaker. Uh, for a second, and I want to 
say thank you to Representative Kenyatta, to Representative, I'm going to get in trouble. I want to say thank you to all of the elected leaders and the union leaders that were here. And I want to just take a step back for a second, which is where Jerry started, which is when Governor Corbett was governor. What he tried to do was put a dagger into the heart of labor and the heart of education. And what he tried to do, Vincent remembers this, he called it out, what he tried to do was he tried to divide parents versus educators. You remember that. Council member Ginn remembers that. He tried to divide Pittsburgh and Philly versus the rest of the state. Remember, listen to, remember what he said, and then think about what Trump says. The rest of the state, he used to say, oh, Philly, they don't deserve the money. Oh, Philly, they deserve the kind of schools with asbestos in it. Schools that can't even afford having soap. And he would say, the teachers, they don't care about your kids. Remember that. And then remember what Betsy DeVos says. And remember what Donald Trump says. It's a constant division. In some ways, the only time it stopped was when one of our children died of asthma because she didn't have a nurse in that school. I love when people say, well, we don't have enough money for nurses. So what do you think? You think kids get sick only the days that the nurse is in the school? Oh, please, do not get sick on Tuesday and Friday we don't have a nurse in the school. But that is the choices that happen when there's austerity. When people say it's not enough money to go around. Really? There's not enough money to go around? Why did we do pre-COVID $3 trillion of tax cuts for people who didn't need it? Why pre-COVID 40% of Americans couldn't put $400 together for an emergency. My point in saying all this is that the community in Philly got together with the community in Scranton and Allentown and Pittsburgh and the communities in Harrisburg and Lackawanna and Erie and Chester and in Bucks County and Montgomery County, and you voted out Tom Corbett. And you got a lot of representatives since that point that you voted in. Yes, it is true. I'm here a lot. And we have fought those fights against austerity and against state control. But these representatives that are here and these union leaders that are here, we are fighting for a fight to get things done, not just to fight against bad shit. And that is what this election is about. It's about both these things. Everybody here, and look, I, I'm, not the, I'm not the pastor of my family. That's my wife. But she, as you said, I think it was Representative Kenyatta said, every Friday night, she announces the number of deaths in New York from COVID. And in the state, New York State, and in the country, and in the world. Because we cannot forget ever the desperate, terrible toll that the president's malpractice has created and, and had on so many people. It's the, not only the deaths, not only the number of people who've had COVID. Remember, yesterday was the highest number of infections this entire time. And people are tired. People are tired of wearing masks. 
People are tired of not seeing their grandkids. People are tired of not being with people when someone dies. People are tired of having their kids home instead of in schools. And people are scared. People are scared about losing protections for pre-existing conditions. If the Supreme Court nominee gets installed, then she will get installed. People are tired and scared about drug costs, about the fact that eight million people have slipped into poverty. I don't think they've slipped into poverty in this COVID. I think they've been kicked into poverty. While at the same time, billionaires have made half a trillion dollars. You've heard all this. You know all this. There are so many reasons to vote Donald Trump out of office. But this is what I'm scared of. Vote him out. This, this is what I am scared of. This is what I am scared of. This corner, those people who are voting, let's cheer for the people who are voting. Thank you, thank you. This, this is what I am scared of. And this is what I wanna leave you with. We know, you wanna help me? We know as a labor movement, Together we can accomplish what is impossible to do alone. That's our credo, that's who we are. Yeah. We have, and the good city of Philadelphia have, has elected all these amazing representatives you heard from before, who have heart, who have soul, who make a difference in the lives of everyday folks here. But there are a lot of people we know, we know, and we know who are watching the live stream, who feel and will say in the whispers of their home, it doesn't matter. What does my vote matter? It it's gonna steal, he's gonna steal it anyway. What does it matter? It exactly, exactly. This is our job. You know that Joe Biden and Kamala Harris are gonna do for the country like what happened in Philly and turning this around and getting our public schools back and getting labor back when we have people in there who are real believers, who have the dignity, the respect, understand how to strengthen public schools, understand that healthcare is a right, not a privilege, understand that climate change is real, understand that racism is real. You know that about them. You've seen that in the debates. You see who they are. That is not the issue in terms of Philly. The issue in terms of Philly, the issue in terms of Pennsylvania is getting out the vote. It's getting those folks who quietly are saying it doesn't matter to turn them around. Remember, to turn them around. So this is our job right now. Will we get out the vote? Will we get out the vote? Yeah. Will we get out the vote? Yeah. Will we vote him out? Yeah. Will we vote Trump out? Yeah. Will we vote for Joe Biden and Kamala Harris? Yeah. And then will we count every vote? Yeah. If we get out the vote and we count every vote, then Biden and Harris will be in the White House on January 20th. Thank you! I don't think anybody can say it better than Randy Weingarten. We've got to turn out the vote, and we've got to make sure that Joe Biden and Kamala Harris